In today's video, we're going to spend some time talking about deep concealment carry and the various options that you might use when you absolutely have to maximize your ability to conceal your pistol. We've noticed a large percentage of our viewers have not subscribed, so if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name's Ed Thorell, and we'd like to thank all of our viewers for sticking with us and helping us keep our traction going. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the like, the share, and subscribe so you won't miss a minute of any episode that uh, we release. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about deep concealment when you absolutely have to make sure that your CCW pistol is not going to be seen. And there are people out there that work in the public that carry, but they absolutely have to have the confidence that nothing is going to show. So we wanted to go through some of the various types of options that are gonna be available for you in this particular type of scenario. Now, one example would be something like this, where people like to carry what's called appendix carry up front. And today we're featuring a Smith & Wesson shield. We're safe, we're clear. And the Smith & Wesson shield is one of the most popular concealed carry guns in America, without a doubt. These things fly off the shelf. And the reason that this is a very attractive choice is because it has such a very thin profile, meaning it's gonna be held up close to your body. It's not gonna have much availability of printing because it's so thin. And the contour is going to nestle against your body so that it's just not gonna be very easy to see. Now, a lot of folks like what's called appendix carry, where you would carry over your appendix. And it offers a very fast way of accessing your pistol, having it right in front of you. But everything that you carry and the way that you carry it is going to be a compromise. Now, if you're going to carry appendix, it may not be very comfortable in a sitting position, especially if you're gonna be in the car for a long time. But it's important to understand for CCW, it's meant to be comforting, not comfortable. So you have to understand that you're going to have to make a compromise, and you may not necessarily be comfortable carrying, but you're gonna find your own voice in the way that you carry. Now, for something like this, you could also carry you know in different positions whether you carry it at the three o'clock or back here at the four o'clock depending on what's most comfortable for you and still get many of the the same best qualities when it comes to concealability um, a lot of people are comfortable with carrying it over their four o'clock because it nestles right up against your hip bone and as you can see there's not much to see it, it pretty much just tucks away because you've got a Kydex holster inside the waistband and a very thin contour of, of, of the shield. So that's another way to go. And you find your own voice and your own comfort level in the way that you're going to carry a pistol. Now, today we've got a couple of different holsters that have been sent to us by our friends over at K Tactical and uh, we just wanted to highlight some of that. Um, K Tactical sent us this and it's uh, a Kydex holster. It's black on the outside. It's got a really nice red detail on the inside and that makes it just you know really kind of a cool look and uh, it's got a, a very secure clip that would hold on to your hold on to your belt and not let go. So if you grab the pistol, the holster stays and the gun comes out. That's something to consider. So Kydex is, is a great option, um, but it's a compromise. Some people don't like the feel of plastic against the skin and they don't like the rigidity because it doesn't bend with the body. But Kydex is, is one of those materials that is, is so popular right now uh, people are accepting it and it's become a big standard within the industry. Um, another way to go would be something in a leather holster. And this was also sent to us by our friends over at K Tactical. And red seems to be sort of their signature color 
when it comes to stitching and their highlights. And I like the stitching. It's good, got good high quality. It's also got a really nice stiff spring that is the metal spring is going to lock over your belt and not go. And this would actually be a good choice for people that might want to carry um, a more of a full size or a compact pistol as opposed to a, uh, a subcompact. There's still folks out there, you know, we're safe and clear, that might want to carry their XD, which is going to be definitely because it's a double stack, is going to have a wider contour. But um, with this particular uh, kind of configuration of carry, you could still even carry something like this in appendix carry without really showing. Now, you are going to have, the, the deeper that you carry it, one of the compromises you're going to be having to make is, is it may not access quite so well. You know, I've got I've to dig a little bit deeper to get a hold of this. And for me, that's kind of uncomfortable. For me, that cuts down on the speed. For me, I would be more likely to carry back here in, in the four o'clock position um, over the, right behind the hip bone. For me, this is a little bit more comfortable and easy to access, but, but as you can see, it still hides really nice. So you still have the ability to you know, carry a full-size pistol if you've got the right holster for it. And let's not forget, you also have to have the right belt for it. We've talked about having a, a, a purpose-built gun belt, and a, just a fashion belt is not going to support the weight of this, even if it's an inside the waistband holster. So this is another choice. Now, still continuing our little chat about leather, you're going to notice that different companies offer different weights of leather. And this particular one is from a company called DeSantis. And you can see that they have a double thickness of layer compared to a single thickness of layer on the, the K, uh, K Tactical. Now, one of the things that the double thickness is going to offer you is, is more rigidity, but it's also going to have a little bit more of a, uh, a contour. Um, now, even with this, I could do something with uh, appendix carry, and I never warmed up to appendix carry, so I'm just, you know, we're just talking here. But at the same time, um, not much in the way of, of printing. I moved it over here probably a little bit better. There we go, just about disappears. I'm just not a fan of appendix carry. And a lot of that has to depend also on your body type. If you are thinner and you don't have much gut, it's going to be much easier, more comfortable to carry as appendix carry than necessarily if you've got more weight. And for those of you that are paying attention, I'm a bit thinner. And it's not because my producer went out and found a skinny lens finally. It's because I've actually lost probably about um, 27 pounds, gone from 240 to 213. So my body type has changed. And a few months ago, this would have been a lot less comfortable than it is now. So for skinny guys, and I'm still not skinny, but for skinny-er guys, the appendix carry is going to be more comfortable than for guys that are, you know, there's more to love because they may have to have to work around their body to actually get to the pistol. So it's another consideration. One size does not fit all. And you know, um, your comfort level is going to go completely different from one person to another. And you may end up going through several different types of holsters and carry before you actually find the one that's right for you. Now, um, we also wanted to point out another style of, of carry and it's what's known as the belly band. And the belly band has become much more popular lately. And it's also something that a lot of our female clients are going to. 
Uh, one of the things, big differences between men and women is men are used to carrying and wearing belts because we put a lot of stuff on our belts. But there's a lot of women who do not want to wear a belt because they don't want to accentuate their waistline. And because of that, you know, I'm a big advocate of carrying on body. I'm not a big fan of women carrying in their purses because it's the first thing a bad guy is going to take away from you. So I'm a big believer in carrying on body. And for a lot of people, um, a belly band actually offers a, a, a really good option in terms of um, how to carry something that's fairly secure. And you can see, by the way I'm demonstrating this, that you know different belly bands are going to come with different methods of securing the pistol into um, the holster part of it. And you can also see that um, many of them come with extra pockets. In this case, there's a pocket here which could fit an extra magazine or a phone. I really wouldn't want to carry a phone in this because every time the phone rang, you'd be exposing the fact that you were carrying something underneath which might telegraph that you're actually CCW. So I wouldn't be a big fan of carrying a phone, but at the same time, I really would prefer to have an extra mag or two if I'm going to be out on the streets. So. This is an oppor uh, another option for, for deep carry. And um, I just wanted to kind of show you and give you an idea um, how this goes on um, over my clothes. And, and later on when we come back, we'll do a demonstration where it is uh, actually meant to be worn. But it's actually much easier to put this on with the, the pistol where you want it. And in this case, you know, I would be carrying it at, you know, my normal four o'clock position, which is something I'm comfortable with. But there are plenty of people that would carry it maybe out in front, modified, you know, carry to where it's still up here in front. And, and I would say that if I was going to carry this every day, I would wear a T-shirt under it because, you know, this is basically wetsuit material. It doesn't breathe and it's going to sweat and you're gonna be a lot more comfortable at the end of the day if you've got a breathable layer that's between you and the belly band. But, you know, the belly band is nice because you can adjust it to fit. Um, and I could easily wear this all day and forget I have it on. Um, for some folks with a little bit of belly, this is actually gonna help you suck it in so that you look thinner. So, you know, as a fashion choice, that may not be a, a, a terrible thing, but you could carry an appendix carry right up here in front of you where it's nice and secure, or depending on how you feel about it, you could also shift it into a different position. Um, I've seen some people with different holsters where they like to carry what's known as small of the back. Um, if you carry small of the back, it is going to, because of the way your back arches, it's going to hold it up nice and close. But I'm not a big fan of carrying small of the back because if you fall backwards on the gun, you could end up with a spinal injury that is never going to go away. So for me, if you're in a dynamic situation, I would rather not put myself in a position where the gun could actually hurt me if I took a fall. I'm less likely to hurt myself if I've got it on the four o'clock position. Um, and for me, it's just more comfortable there. Not to say that I couldn't, I couldn't learn to live with a belly band and carry it in the appendix position. I probably could. Um, but anyway, we're gonna come back in a little while and we're gonna demonstrate these in different positions so you've got a better idea of understanding what it's like when we put all this together. Now, one of the things I do want to caution people with the belly band is the fact that because you're dealing with, with nothing but a, uh, an elastic material, once you draw the gun, it, it, it takes a little bit more effort to get it back into the holster. 
it, it doesn't have the same type of openness that you get with Kydex that is molded into place to where you get a nice easy reholster. So you have to really have your head in the game if you're going to be practicing with a belly band because you really have to pay attention when you're reholstering a loaded weapon because it's going to take a lot more attention to do it right and avoid accidents. So whatever type of product that you adopt, understand that every product has its limits and you're making a compromise with every product you make because they're not going to be 100%, nothing is. You're never going to find something that's perfect. Um, you're just going to find what's perfect for you. And that's something that you need to understand. Anyway, we're going to come back in a couple of minutes. We're going to run through these different products and do a demonstration. So stick with us. We're coming right back. So first, we're going to demonstrate the shield using the Kydex from the appendix position. Now, it's, it's going to be the same sort of routine that you would use. You still have to clear the cover garment and get it out of the way. Get a firm grip of the pistol straight up, join, extend. All right. And just like with all reholstering, you take nothing for granted. You always want to look to see where you're reholstering. Finger way off the trigger. This is the last place I want to have an accident. Okay. Once again, always look at the reholster. Take nothing for granted. It's reholstering where most accidents happen, so you take nothing for granted. Don't try any of this stuff where you try to do it without looking. Uh, that's an accident waiting to happen. One more time. Okay, finger way from the trigger. You can see I still have a gut that I have to push out of the way. But give me a few more weeks and we're going to try to melt that off. But this is a great opportunity to show that sometimes your gut might get in the way of the holster. So skinny guys have an advantage with the, uh, with the appendix carry because they don't have this. But like I said, give me a few more weeks. So. All right. Now we're going to transition this to... My more familiar four o'clock position. All right, we're all good. We should try to, oh, because I'm over the belt loop, it's not gonna lock in. So you've gotta make sure that you're in a position where the clip isn't interfering with the belt loop and can't lock up. This is all about having a secure holster that's not gonna pull out when you do your draw. So once again, even at the four o'clock position, you may want to push your hip out just a little bit to expose that holster so you can see it. But once again, you can see that that doesn't really show. Now, mind you, I'm wearing camouflage, which is going to be also because I've got a dark pattern is going to help um, hide away any uh, shape that's not part of nature. But you can see that there's not much really there that's going to print or people are going to see. So same thing. You're going to have to uh, move your cover garment. The shield is nice because it's got such a thin contour that it, it, you don't really feel the weight. However, um, it's also a compromise that it sits so close to your body, it, it's, it's sometimes hard to get the thumb between the gun and the skin to get a solid grip for the, uh, uh, for the draw. And you want to make sure that you have a solid grip before you actually start the draw. All right, 
We're safe and clear with the shield. We're done there. I'm going to switch out to the XD. All right, so we've got the XD now, and the XD is a full size. And during prep, I tried carrying an appendix, and it's just not comfortable. Now, it might be a different um, situation if you went with the compact XD. So for this demonstration, we're just going to be working from the 4 o'clock position, which for me is much more comfortable. Um, I am not going to trade safety for comfort and uh, I didn't feel safe with it there. So if it's something you want to do, carry a full size, you know, appendix, it's up to you. Um, I felt safe doing it with the Smith, but not so much the XD. So we're just going to be working from the four o'clock position so you can see what it's like working with the inside the waistband holster. So same thing, you're gonna have to clear the cover garment. You're gonna have to get a good grip before you pull. All right, now, something that you need to be aware of when we're talking about leather compared to the Kydex is that when you draw, the leather holster is going to collapse. Now, the Kydex is going to be molded into shape to make it much easier to reholster. And if you don't have necessarily um, a very, very firmly, uh, uh, firmly built holster that is made not to collapse, you're going to have to be very careful in the way that you reholster. And that means it's going to take two hands, which I do not like doing, but I'm being very, very careful and deliberate how I do this just so that you can see some of the drawbacks of having an IWB holster that's made out of leather. And when it comes to training, you're going to be very, very deliberate in how you proceed because you're dealing with something that um, you're going to be making a compromise in safety when you have to reholster because the holster may collapse on you. And that's one of the big advantages of Kydex over leather if you're going to be carrying inside the waistband. So, um, a molded material like Kydex, while it may not be as comfortable, is going to have a safety factor over the leather because it will not collapse and it will retain its shape. Um, once again, you move the cover garment, you get a good grip. We're safe and clear. All right, I'm going to transition to the belly band and be right back. All right, so the last thing that we're going to demonstrate is going to be the belly band. And it's going to maybe ride a little bit higher on your waist, which means it's going to have to um, pull your cover garment further up to clear it. In this case, you know, you unsnap, good grip. Okay, now. One of the same disadvantages that you encounter with having uh, inside the waistband with leather is that the holster will collapse and make it harder to reholster. And the same is true when you're dealing just with um, something that's elastic. So you've got to be very, very careful when you're doing this to make sure that nothing gets caught between the trigger, like say um, a piece of clothing could set off the trigger. So you wanna make sure that there's absolutely, everything is clear when you redo this. Okay. Just to make it easier, I actually tucked that snap out of the way inside my waistband so that it couldn't foul it. Um, all right, we'll do this one more time from the appendix. You're going to pull your cover garment out of the way, unsnap. All right, we're safe and clear. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reload. Just 
safely reholster, say a little prayer. And then what I'm gonna do is rotate this back to my familiar four o'clock position. And for me, because it rides right behind the hip bone, it tucks right into what I call the pocket and it pretty much just disappears. And frankly, if I was going to be carrying a belly band, I would still probably carry at the four o'clock. Um, I'm just a lot more confident with this position than I am up here. And that's just personal taste. I mean, I've never warmed up to the appendix carry, which is why I'm being so very careful with it today for that very reason. So, same is true. You pull and you clear your cover garment. You release the snap. You get a good grip. Okay, same is true. You've gotta be very careful how you reholster this and make sure that no clothing gets in the trigger guard that could otherwise set it off and you end up with an accidental or a negligent discharge. Um, we'll do this one more time. Clear the cover garment, remove your snap, good grip, finger off the trigger until you're actually on target. We're safe and we're clear. All right, we'd like to thank our friends over at K-Tactical for providing us with a couple of examples of inside the waistband holsters or IWB. And we want to thank our, uh, um, our viewers for sticking with us and giving us traction while we've been on this break. And uh, if you haven't done it already, hit the like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we had a great time today reviewing uh, different IWB holsters as well as the belly band and we hope that we've been able to fill in some of the blanks by helping you experience some of the different pros and cons for each different product that are going to help you make decisions when you go out and start thinking about how it is you're actually going to carry in this type of scenario. So thank you very much. I'm Ed Thorell from Shoot of the Series. Y'all take care.